Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about safe bets, future safe bets, investments, if you will. So let's get into it. Now, what am I going on about? Well, you see, the other day a subscriber of mine asked me to talk a little bit about the future the future of programming and what's coming up in the next five or possibly ten years and he used this great phrase or this great analogy to software and technologies and all that good stuff being the sort of thing or at least very similar to stock like investing in t in programming languages and what you should learn as a programmer is very much as investing in stocks and this is great because this is the second time in my life somebody has said that exact term it's a, an analogy that I actually had heard first several years ago from a, a keynote speaker at one of my like at my schools like we invited different profiles within the IT community to our school and this person explained that the problem and I think I've said this myself as well and I think this will make sense to you the problem with IT is that there is so much that you could in theory learn or need to learn that there's no way for you to know it all it's not possible for you to do the, to, to learn everything in IT there's just too much of it so you have to pick and when you have to pick the question becomes all right what are you optimizing for? Are you going for personal enjoyment? Maybe you have some technologies that you're really, really passionate about, but at the same time, then you have the people who are more business oriented. If you just after a job, that sort of thing, what do you bet on? Because you know, the trends shift and your market value is depending on usually two things. Now, I want to make something clear first and foremost, and that is that if you are a solid senior developer, if you have worked for X amount of years, most of your value comes from the fact that you know programming. I mean, I know, I have friends who have been working for years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and I can tell you right now, it, it doesn't matter what they know. It's very, or rather it's very rare. Like they can, how do I put this? They may not be the first choice for certain very specific situations, but they will never get turned down for an interview at any company that does generic programming that doesn't specialize in something extremely, extremely niche because they've been working for so long and they know the craft that the, whoever hires them knows that even if they don't have that specific piece of technology or that specific language, for example, on their CV, they're going to pick it up. It, in no time at all so never think that just because you don't know one specific language that that doesn't that that means that you are useless to the company because programming is that similar unless of course you work in more niched technologies but then you have the other thing which is what i the, this subscriber was talking about the investment all right so what do you bet your money on or rather what do you bet your time on because you can't learn it all now I can tell you that right now, the top list for employment purposes, if we're talking about just value for time value, like return on investment, if you are just in, if, if you want to be sure that you're betting your career on stable technology that you know will ha retain its value there's no think of it as actually think of it as stock stable stock versus high risk stock well then that list is actually very easy it's the same list that has been it has been the same list for i think maybe may between five or ten years and i don't see that changing anytime soon so first and foremost what is the safest language in the world right now to... Well, actually, there's a few developments. I don't think that it's not going to be the safest language anymore, but it's uh, there's some interesting things happening. So first and foremost, JavaScript. You ca I can promise you here and now 
in front of all these wonderful people that JavaScript will, like it is, the world's most popular programming language and as long as it is the language, the primary language rather, for the browser, there is nothing as valuable as JavaScript. I'm not saying that you have to spend your entire career just doing JavaScript, but I can tell you that every single programmer who wants to work on the web needs to know that language and every single programmer who wants to be sure that they can keep up with what's changing and what's happening for us software developers on the web and so forth, they have to keep it around, they have to know it. It's that simple. You don't have to work with it full time, but you're gonna see it and you're gonna interact with it. Trust me. So that's a very good stock to invest in. Very, very good stock. So what's in second place? Well, rather split second place, depending on your preference. There you're going to find Java and C Sharp, or more specifically the .NET framework or .NET Core and so forth. It's .NET, not, not, that's a framework, but C Sharp, like it's kind of, like I, I use these a little bit interchangeably, I know that's incorrect, but it's like, in theory, you could do C Sharp without .NET, but like, people kind of assume that they, you talk about .NET when you're talking about professional level C Sharp development. Anywho. Java and this, this sort of language, Java is the world's second most favorite programming language and it is by far the most widely used programming language in the corporate world. Which means that if you think about that stock-wise, if you think about it for time, time investment versus return on that investment, that's also a very good bet because if you have, you should know this guys, big, really big companies, unless they are IT companies such as Google and Facebook, I mean even these companies, they don't migrate their entire tech stack every single time somebody comes up with a new language like Crystal, for example. Just because a new language comes around, these big companies, they don't migrate just because of that. It's kind of funny because a lot of these big companies, they start the trends, but they don't follow through. Like they start a few projects here and they're using their own stuff, but they don't like they don't migrate their whole whole product over to it. Most of them actually use Java and C sharp because this, the, these are extremely stable technologies and they have been around for years and years and years. And there's so much invested in these platforms that I, I don't know how many times I've read, hmm, is Java dying? Is Java going away? Or blah, no, guys, it's not going anywhere. If COBOL is still around, trust me, and COBOL is, not, is nowhere near as widespread as Java is today, or rather it was not as widespread as Java is today. Trust me, Java is not going anywhere. That is some stable stock to invest in. Trust me on this. And just for kicks, I'll throw in one last thing. And that's the high risk stock. The thing that I think right now has the potential to completely skyrocket if everything turns out well, but it could also fall on, fall on its ass and just kind of mellow out like all the other stock that is running around right now. And that is, drum roll, Rust. Yes, Rust is my, is the, if, if I were to invest my any time, and I actually am, I would say that Java and JavaScript are the stable choices. That's the sort of thing that you want to invest in first, because that's going to give you a foundation going forward. It, by just knowing these two languages, you will have a, have a safe career for the rest of your life, most likely. And Rust is the thing that is right now gearing up to becoming one of the biggest, it has the potential to make a massive impact on how we do work, not just on the web. The potential for, uh, it's actually, it's almost a cataclysmic potential that we have here. It's almost to the point where I would say that it could rev revolutionize the way that we do software development, not just on the web, but on like uh, uh, just system level programming and games programming and so forth. There's so much potential here. So I'm very interested, I, I'm getting in now, because I want to see if it takes off, because but remember, for the juniors, I already have invested in JavaScript and Java, so that's why I can take the risk of investing in Rust. You can take that risk now if you want to, but I suggest to use to start with JavaScript and Java, or C Sharp if that's your preference, to start before you get into that sort of thing. So 
that's what I would say. These are the safest stocks or time investments you can do at this point in time. Have a great day.